Hey, what's up guys? Root of the Null here, and today we're looking at even more Python. Man, we are on a roll with this language, aren't we? <laughs> so, today I want to let you guys know how you can uh, set up your scripts to be able to, to run them. Um, we're going to get to this part of the tutorial series where we're actually going to start to write software rather than just playing inside the interactive shell. <laughs> so, we're going to need to create a new window, we're going to need to save the file as something we can run, and uh, yeah, let's get started with idle. I'm going to open it up in Linux, first of all and then I'm going to show you how to get this stuff done on Windows, in case you don't know, because it's a little bit of a different structure. But uh, let's get started with a new window. I'll bring that up here. I think we'll just we'll make an incredibly simple program that all it says is, Hello, world. Actually, let's make it a little bit fancier. Let's, let's give a variable. Let's give, a, let's give it a caption. Here it is. Let's type in a, Hello, world. I'm going to add a semicolon here, and I'll talk to you guys about semicolons a bit more in another video, but here we're going to type in print caption. Then we're going to save this. I'm going to bring over the dialog box so you can see what I'm doing here, and we're going to call this um, file.py. File.python. Oh, let's put a semicolon here just to be proper too, and let's get open up a terminal. Now this is where you're going to want to be. Now, you can do some different things with this. Before we get started with the terminal, let me show you how you can do things in, in, uh, in idle. If you want to, you can just hit run up in the menu bar and hit run module, and then your program will run perfectly fine. You can just hit, you can just hit the F5 key to do that again as many times as you need to. Remember that the, the, the file has to be saved. That's because Python is a scripting language, and that is another thing that I'll get into more. But the file does have to be saved before you can run it, so if, you, if it isn't saved, it'll ask you, source must be saved before we start doing things. Is that okay? And then, yeah, yeah that's fine, I don't care. And run the program and you're done. Now, when you're at the terminal or at the command line, you can... Okay, let me make sure we've got file.python. Here we go, good. If we do python file.py, if we pass in that file to the Python program without invoking the interactive shell, we should be perfectly fine. It'll run the program exactly how we want it to. We don't have to type in the full name because at the command line you can just hit tab and it'll fill things in for you. So Python file, I wonder if it'll, no, it does need that whole file name. It needs the extension, but it'll run the thing as many as what, whenever we need to. If we don't want to be passing it to Python all the time, we just want to set this as an executable file, we need to include what Linux calls a shebang line. And uh, let's make this visible to you here. Um, this the shebang line lets the lets the system know or lets Linux know that this is the program that we want to be. Uh, ooh, interpreter. I don't know if I. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, this lets the program know. Or this lets Linux know that this path right here is the pro is the path of the program that you want to understand this file. So if we go back to our Python file here, we type that in the shebang line usr bin environment python. So this will link us to the python environment. It'll link us to the it'll point the system to the python interpreter is kind of kind of what I'm trying to say here. You don't need a semicolon here because this is just a, a a normal instruction. So if we save that, we can run it in idle. We don't have to do that though. And we'll bring it back to the command line. So now we're at the command line, I'm going to hit control L to clear the screen. And we have file.python, but it's not executable yet. So what we're going to want to do is type in chmod, or chmod, add an x so we can add to it, and then we're going to want to type in the file name. Let's call it file.python, grand. Now you can see that it has a little bit of a, a different color scheme if we list out the files. And we'll type in file.python. It'll run, and it runs perfectly fine, just like that. There you go. It's exactly what we wanted it to do, and we can do that either invoking Python, or now we can run it without that, and it just makes things a lot easier, so kudos to that. Now, that's how you can do it in Linux. Uh, in, in Windows, it's a different sort of style, so I'm going to get Windows 7 started up here and let you guys show you... I'm going to show you guys how to get it done. Windows is going to be pretty clunky as always, and VirtualBox is just going to splatter all over my screen because that's what it does. <laughs> and uh, I'll jiggle this window for a little bit while we wait. <laughs> I'm going to log in. And uh, boom, let's get started. You can hit the Windows key 
and get idle started up. And we'll practically do the same thing that we just did in Linux. We'll create a new file and we'll just do caption equals hello. And that's all we really want. Print. Oh, let's make sure we type that function correctly. Print caption. I'll add a little semicolon here and let's get started to save this. We'll, I'm going to put it in my desktop just so it's visible and you guys can see it. And we'll name this one file.python. Now that that's saved, we can, uh, if we go back to our desktop, we can see it right here. What we could do is we could click on it, and then it'll open up the command prompt incredibly quickly, though, because it's going to run to the, it's going to run to the end of the script. It's going to run through the program, and then when it's done, it just shuts down. It goes away. So if you don't have any prompts for the user, it'll just start and then vanish. It'll breeze through the program without letting you even see what's going on. So to avoid this without having to create a prompt for ourselves, we can uh, go into CMD, we can either oh, start it up in the start menu, or we can hit Windows key and R to bring up the run dialog box. That should work on yours. Since I'm in a virtual box, that might not. But once you get CMD open, just type in CMD, because that's the command that you're going to use, and navigate with the CD command to wherever you saved it. I'm in the desktop, so I'm going to CD to the desktop. If we look here, we have file.python. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want to be looking at, so we're just going to type that in, file.python. We hit enter and we get hello we get exactly what we wanted when we saved that file so boom that's how you do it that is how you save and you run your file and your your python scripts in linux that's how you do it in uh in windows at the moment because we're going to be using some command line programs first i don't know if we ever will venture into the wonderful world of the graphical user interface but for now this is how you should be running your programs in case you don't want to do it in idle so there, that's how you go. That's how you do it. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. I hope this was a little bit helpful. I know it was a bit more of a, of a, a bit of a breeze tutorial since we're just sort of running through how to get this done. But this should come in handy for the next couple of tutorials because we are going to move ourselves into a world where we have a blank canvas. We don't have this silly little prompt where, we, where all we have to do is type in commands. We will be able to write our own code from scratch. So... I hope you're excited. I hope you're as excited as I am, and I will see you in the next tutorial.